So hierarchical clustering, um, as I mentioned before, uh, it kind of creates these overlapping clusters or this tree like structure of overlapping clusters. And you can kind of think of hierarchical clustering in the context of adjacency matrices or like similarity and distance matrices, um, where you would have um, a matrix, a square matrix, and then each cell will represent the distance or the similarity, um, depending on the calculation you use between two observations. Um, on this plot on the right here, it might be a little confusing, but there's actually hierarchical clustering going on with both samples and genes. So across the top, the columns, those are all the different samples. And you can see that those are actually the three clusters um, that we were able to detect with hierarchical clustering on the same uh, papillary adenocarcinoma samples that I showed earlier. Um, and you can think of that clustering as being organized based on the similarity of each sample with the other samples. So samples are basically clustered with other samples that are very similar, and they're kind of grouped that way also in this plot. And then down the rows, this plot also happens to show the hierarchical clustering of the genes. So essentially, the, row, some, the rows were clustered based on the similarity of each gene to all the other genes that were measured in each sample. Because it generates a tree-like structure of clusters, you have a single cluster that contains all points at the top, and then you have individual data point clusters at the bottom. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next slide, but you can kind of see that structure with these lines, and that is just a dendrogram, um, which some of you have probably seen before. And so, like I mentioned earlier, clusters necessarily overlap because you're basically, each cluster will belong to a parent cluster, um, and will also probably have some sort of child clusters. And this can be more reflective of real circumstances where you do have samples or data points that are going to overlap. Um, so for instance, patients might have just discrete demographic categories, but they can also belong to multiple groups, perhaps if certain groups of patients are overlapping with each other or are more related to each other than others. Um, but because you're kind of going through the entire data set, hierarchical clustering is slower and more computationally intensive than partitional clustering. Um, and so, as I mentioned earlier, these dendrograms actually show each of the clusters that are computed using a hierarchical clustering. So the branches of a dendrogram will basically join wherever two clusters merge together. And then the height at which the two clusters are merged actually represents the distance between those two clusters. And so one common way of determining the final clusters um, that you obtain from a hierarchical clustering algorithm is to actually identify like a minimum branch height at which you will cut the branches and consider those your clusters. Um, and in this case, the branches are not colored, but in a lot of traditional dendrograms for hierarchical clustering, uh, the branches will actually be colored to enhance um, the visualization of the clusters. So different branches will be one color if they all correspond to one of the final clusters. There's two subcategories of hierarchical clustering. So there is agglomerative or bottom-up clustering, where you can think of starting with each object as its own cluster and then merging those clusters together in each iteration until you get your final set of clusters. There's also divisive or top-down clustering. And this is when you start with all objects in one cluster, and then you continuously divide them into smaller clusters in each iteration until you get the clusters that you want. Um, and so all the methods I'm going to be talking about are pretty much agglomerative clustering methods. Divisive clustering um, is very infrequently used. I would argue it's also not as intuitive to understand. Um, and there's also not a lot of predefined functions for it um, in many coding languages, uh, just because it is not very frequently used. So agglomerative clustering is probably most often what you will encounter when you're looking at hierarchical clustering. So for agglomerative clustering, um, when you're starting with an higher agglomerative clustering algorithm, you're just merging single object clusters. And this can be relatively straightforward. So you will need some sort of distance metric. I think cosine or Euclidean are the most commonly used metrics, but there's also a lot of other metrics depending on your specific use case that you can look up, such as the Chebyshev, the Jacquard, the Manhattan or city block or Hamming metrics. Um, and then, of course, we'll just compute the distance between each of the points, and then you'll just merge pairs of points that have the closest distance measures. 
Um, but then once you have those multi-object clusters, uh, you're going to need some way of computing the distance between each of those clusters. And that requires a linkage method. Um, and so the first linkage method is called single linkage. So this is where the distance between two of these multi-object clusters is equivalent to the smallest or shortest distance between any of the two points in the clusters. So this is very fast, um, but it performs the best on non-noisy data. So if you have a lot of points that are all very close to each other, um, this is going to be a more difficult, this is not going to be the best method for figuring out where the clustering uh, divides should be. You also have complete linkage, which is where the distance between two clusters is equivalent to the farthest distance between any two points in the clusters. So this performs well um, when you have clusters that are you know, pretty distinctly separated um, and are also relatively similarly shaped, but it does not handle outliers well. Um, if you have points that are kind of very far out. Um, and this one is also similarly fast to single linkage. The third method is average linkage. Um, and this is where the distance between the clusters is equivalent to the average distance between all possible pairs of points between the clusters. So this performs pretty well on most data sets. Um, but because you're computing all those distances between the points, this is much slower than single and complete linkage. And then the fourth method is ward linkage. And this is basically where the distance between clusters is equivalent to an increase in the sum of the square distances from each point to the cluster centroid. So you can kind of think of if you were to combine these two clusters, um, what would be the increase in the sum of the square distances from all of those points to the new cluster center? And so if two clusters are very far apart, you're going to get a much larger increase in that sum of square distances versus if those clusters are smaller. And then this is a method that you would use if you're really wanting to minimize within cluster variance. So you very really want to uh, emphasize the separation of clusters. 